Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're in the MiG-29 and we're looking at takeoff and landing. So this is relevant for all of the MiGs, the A, the S and the G. So let's get started. We're always going to want our flaps down for takeoff. So flaps down, get the indicator light there. So what we're going to do is hold on the wheel brake and then we're going to spool up our engine until we're about 95% fan RPM which is there, uh, which is military power. So before the afterburners come on, the afterburner, when the afterburners come on, you'll get a green light there and there. Once you're fully spooled up to 95, release the wheel brakes and then full power into afterburner. Some jets you can take off a military power, i.e. full power without afterburner. These engines are pretty weedy, I find, on mill power. So I always suggest an afterburn takeoff with the MiG-29. The rotation speed is going to be 240 clicks, and we've got our speedo up here. Once we rotate, it's important not to rotate too far. In most planes, I suggest about 10 degrees. In this plane, I suggest about 7 degrees. The reason is there's a huge amount of risk of a tail strike. If we look at the back... The uh, rear engine nozzles are really far back and really low down. So if we go near 10 degrees on the rotation, then we risk getting a tail strike and then that'll be the end of our flight. You've got the angle shown here on the hard, zero degrees, 10 degrees, so we want to be somewhere like that. Once you've reached seven degrees, then just hold that until the plane takes off. When the plane actually takes off will depend on the weight of the plane. So if you're heavily loaded, it could be all the way up to above 300 clicks per hour before it takes off. We're in medium load at the moment with full internal fuel, but we have no stores. If the plane is struggling to get off the ground, don't feel that you have to rotate anymore. Don't rotate anymore. You'll just end up risking a tail strike. Instead, just wait and it will eventually get off the ground. Once we're in the air, we're going to keep burners on until we're just below 500 clicks. Then we're back to mill power and then we'll put it in a left hand circuit. Just one thing to note is that she will be fairly um, nose heavy on the trim from stationary. So we're going to add about one second of up trim, 1000 click, um, just to help us fight that. Otherwise, we're ready to go. So wheel brake on, spool to 95, hold, release brake, full power. Now she's an incredibly fast plane, so she will um, get up to speed very quickly. So we just have to be ready for that. Looking at the speed, 240, rotate to 7 degrees and... Old, whoops, a little bit high there, but we're okay. Gear up with G. Flaps up now. Come off burner now. F to put the flaps up. Right, next we're going to go in a left-hand circuit of the base. So we're going to get down to 500 clicks per hour and 1,000 feet. That's about 330 meters. And I will report back to you on the downwind. As per the official MiG-29 flight manual, we're going to fly this downwind and we're going to get our flaps and our gear out. Once we've extended past the threshold of, of the runway by half a mile to a mile, we're going to turn left in a 180 degree base turn. We're going to end that base turn at about the same altitude of just above 300 meters radar. However, by that time, we aim to be down to 300 kilometers per hour IAS. Then for the final approach, we'll aim for a three degrees glide slope to the threshold of the runway. Our speed is going to depend on our weight. Now, we're not going to worry about the speed so much. We're just going to fly at a speed that gets us to our ideal landing angle of attack. In this aircraft, it's between 10 and 11 degrees. So it's critical we get this needle here and hover about 10 to 11 there, not exceeding 13 degrees, at which point we will get a tail strike. The speed that you fly that angle at will depend on our current weight. Just before touchdown, we will flare in the pitch slightly and we will endeavor to keep the nose of the aircraft in the air for aero braking, not exceeding 13 degrees angle of attack. Once we are below 250 clicks per hour IAS, we will deploy the drag chute by pressing the papa key. We will then wheel brake as desired, but the drag chute will have plenty of braking effect. We will not be using air brakes in this aircraft. Halfway down the runway now, we're going to gear out, flaps are going to go down. It's G and F key, maintain 330 or thereabouts, you'll never keep it perfectly but we'll do what we can. I've gone slightly askew of the runway here so I'm just going to turn right a little to even that out. I'm going to work our way down to 300 so that we're 300 IAS by the time we hit the end of our base turn. Level with the threshold now, let's extend for a mile, to maybe half a mile. Aim to get around 300 before we make our base turn. Constantly working the trim to keep ourselves neutral. Okay, I think that'll do us. We're turning our base turn now, just keep our altitude. Our speed wants to work down to about 300 by the time we hit the radial of the runway and finish the base turn. Beating some up trim here. Off the throttle a little. Pretty much constantly feeding an up trim here as the angle of attack grows. We're on about 10 degrees angle, 9 degrees angle of attack. A little bit more power. We don't need to get on 
speed yet. Constantly looking left to judge the radial of the runway. Obviously, we're talking VFR conditions here. Do you have another video on IFR conditions, ILS, and whatnot? Line up, final line up for the radio now. I'm going to increase turn as not to overshoot. Should be just about okay. Right, we're going to start coming off the throttle now to get down to angle of attack on speed, as it's known. About 10 degrees, not too bad there. Slight overshoot. And we can start reducing our altitude now, needless to say. Move my head up a little bit there. Okay, so let's get this next phase sorted. Angle of attack is now 10 to 11, so let's balance that. Quick check down at the gear, and flaps, everything's good. Okay, this feels just about on speed here at 290 clicks per hour. Watch that um, radar altimeter come down. A bit more sick there. Angle of attack's got way too high. Let's correct that. 11 degrees. Angle of attack's still too high. Power on. Okay. It's well corrected. Rudder to keep a central on the runway. I know I'm a bit off, but you know what it'll do. Cut power. Keep the nose up until she stalls. The front will eventually stall and the nose will come down. Okay. Below 250. Parachute out. Papa key. Dab a wheel brake where needed. Push and hold P to release the chute. And below 50, or you can't tell 50, but below 50, we can start on the nose wheel steering. It was not perfect. I should have been on center line. That was because I overshot the radial slightly, which is just a thing that happens. And I undercorrected, so I should have corrected a bit better there. The glide stop was okay. I got a bit panicky at the end there, where I got too slow and over alpha, but I spotted it on the alpha meter there and corrected so by the time I touched down it must have been 10 to 11 which is exactly what I wanted I kept the nose up in the air with a tiny bit of back step, but mainly neutral to how I was in the final approach and it kept the nose up until about 250 or 260 at which point the nose will just kind of stall and, and drop down anyway parachute can go on at that point and that's you done anything you want to add to that onslaught you can actually pull the parachute the moment you touch down on the rear landing wheels you don't actually have to wait until the nose wheel drops to the ground. Okay, I hope that was useful and see you later.